Bismillahirrahmanirrahim after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending salutations, peace and blessings upon the best of creation. The jewel and crown of creation, the beloved of Allah Almighty, the coolness to our eyes, the purpose of our lives, the reviver of our hearts, the inspirer to our minds. The awakening of our souls, the most honored one, the most praised one, the most generous one, the most kind one, undoubtedly he is the most beautiful one. None other than Sayyiduna Muhammad Rasulullah, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa barak wa sallam. The first Jumu'ah after the blessed month of Ramadan has left us. And again, I remind those who are watching, those who are present, that we once again evaluate. We ask ourselves, how have we been since the blessed month of Ramadan has left us? How strong is our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala post Ramadan? How attached and connected are we still with the blessed book, Al Quran Al Kareem? And this is something that we need to ask ourselves constantly. We must ask ourselves regularly. We must do our own muhasaba. We must do our own hisab. We must account ourselves daily, weekly, monthly, yearly. How we will always, every so often, log into online banking to see whether our wage has come. How we log into social media to see the latest trends the latest on the market, how a car trader will always go on to auto trader or co part and look for cars, how we have interest in what we have interest in, those who have interest in football, always going on to live score, seeing what the latest scores are. We need to have an even more bigger interest and bigger connection with accounting ourselves, keeping on top of ourselves, making sure that we are doing as best as possible to draw closer to Allah Jalla wa ala, to earn the pleasure of Allah Almighty, to earn the rewards that we need to gain in order to get proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and constantly doing our own hisab. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an, there's a saying attributed to him and others, hasibu qabla an tuhasabu. Do your own hisab before your hisab is going to be done. There was a great saint, Gnostic Arif Billah, Waliullah, in the time of the Salaf, as salihin his name is Asad ibn Harith al-Muhasabi. He was known as the man who would do his own muhasaba. He's credited with being the one who introduced this idea and concept formalized this idea and concept of doing muhasabatul nafs, muhasabatul a'mal, to account for oneself, one's actions, to see whether one is improving in his daily life or he is getting worse. 
And we have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla wa ala constantly. We must ask Allah Almighty all the time to give us istiqamat ala deen. To grant us steadfastness upon the deen. To allow us to be firm on the deen. This is a dua we make in every prayer, in every salah. Ihdina sirat al mustaqeem. Sirat al ladhina an'amta alayhim. Ghayril maghdubi alayhim walad dalleen. Ameen. Guide us to the straight path. As sirat al mustaqeem. Guide us to this path. And those who are already guided, but maybe slightly off the track, show us. One meaning would be show us. Show us the straight path. As sirat al mustaqeem, though mustaqeem is translated as uh, straight, uh, this is a common translation used. There are other translations as well. Translations such as grant us or guide us upon the path of istiqamat, where we can remain steadfast and firm. Sirat al ladina an amta alayhim, then Allah further explains what is this path that everyone is making dua for? This is the path upon those whom an amta alayhim. The path upon those whom you have had your favors for. Those you are favored upon, that path. And in another verse of the Quran, أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا Allah explains in another verse of the Quran, who he has had his Fadal and karam upon, who he has had his in'am upon, his blessings upon. They are those an'am Allahu alayhim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored and had his blessings upon them. Who? From them, min al nabiyyin min ba'diya, al nabiyyin the prophets, was siddiqeen, the truthful, was shuhada, the martyrs was salihin, the righteous. These are the people whom Allah Almighty has had his khas fadal and karam upon. Allah Almighty has showered upon them his ni'am, his blessings. أَنَعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ This is a sirat al The path of the prophets of Allah, the path of the truthful. The path of the martyrs, the path of the righteous, salihin, awliya, the siddiqeen, it is that path that we should be striving towards. And we should be asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us steadfastness, istiqamat upon this path, firmness. Especially after the month of Ramadan, why? Because in Ramadan, we increased our good deeds. During the day, we abstain from food and drink. We abstain from backbiting, swearing, lying, gossiping. We abstain from what Allah Almighty and His Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam warned us against and prohibited for us. The sins of the tongue. The son of Adam, he will be most accounted for through what he said on his tongue. Most of the person's punishments in the hereafter, in the grave, will be because of how he used his tongue. This tongue is a weapon. If you do not know how to use it, it is detrimental and dangerous. It is an arrow. Once it's fired from its bow, it cannot be returned. Once words leave your mouth, it's very hard to bring them back. 
That's why we must be very careful in what we say with our tongues. The body always complains about the tongue. The hands complain about the tongue. The ears complain about the tongue. The nose and eyes complain about the tongue. He says, why? Why did you speak that today my hands have sinned? I've had to hit someone. Why did you say such and such a thing that today my arms have been abused? Yani, the entire body relies upon the words that come out from the mouth. That's why they say, Al-Lisanu Tarjumanu Al-Qalb. The tongue, this is the interpreter, the translator of the heart. The tongue is a reflection of your heart. If your tongue is moist, bithikrillahi ta'ala, ratman, bithikrillahi ta'ala, it's moist with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this is a reflection of your heart in the state of remembrance in Allah Almighty. If your heart is always thinking about haram and doing wrong, then this is what will be coming from the mouth of that person. If in your mind and in your heart, you are thinking about other people and what they have that you don't have. Jealousy and hatred, bughd, kina, haqad, hasad, ghiba, namima, gossiping, backbiting, lying, swearing. These are all illnesses of the heart which in Ramadan we stayed away from. We cut down on all of this. So after Ramadan, we ask Allah, give us istiqamat upon this. Give us steadfastness and strength that we are able to, we are strong enough. Ya Allah, we are strong enough. You strengthened us enough that we are able to avoid returning back to that lower self, the lower state. And we are able to maintain this higher self, this higher state where we are closer to you and your Habib Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wa Sallam. This is why, my brothers, we ask Allah for istiqamat. We must evaluate. We must always ask ourselves, are we doing enough now? That Ramadan has gone. Have we put enough in place? Enough measures in place to keep us on the straight path? Or will we return back to our old ways? Pre-Ramadan. Ramadan, no doubt, is the most blessed time in the year. The levels of consciousness, the higher levels of the believer are activated. His closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is apparent. It's how life is after Ramadan that we have to ask ourselves. Are we still where we need to be or have we uh, got worse or have we got better? Allah Jalla wa Ala in Al-Quran Al-Kareem, He said, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنًا Continuing from that part of the verse, أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّيقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ The Salihin. Who are the Salihin? Allah Almighty in a number of places in the Quran talks about the Salihin. Allah Almighty talks about them in Ala inna awliya Allah la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun alladhina amanu wa kanu yattaqun lahumul bushra fil hayati dunya wa fil akhira la tabdila li kalimati la thalika huwa al fawzul azim Allah talks about them here He's talking about the salihin that the level of salihiyah is maqamul wilayah They've reached a level of friendship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Salihin, he mentions in another verse, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنًا The servants of the most merciful. وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ The servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is Ar-Rahman, the most merciful. Who are they? الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنًا 
They are those people who walk on this earth honan with humility. The people of Salihiyya, the Salihun, the righteous man, the man of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is humble in his walk. Allah Almighty uh, talks about this. Sayyidina Luqman al-Hakim. In the Quran, Allah talks about Sayyidina Luqman. Sayyidina Luqman, some say that he is a Nabi of Allah. Majority have said that he is a righteous man in Bani Israel. Sayyidina Luqman, he gives advice to his son. There's an entire surah in the Quran called Surat Luqman. You should do, you should recite this surah and you should study this surah. Read the translation of this surah. Those of you who know Urdu, those who know English, find good, accurate translations. Like Kanzul Iman, which is a good translation of the Quran by Sayyidi Allah Hazrat Imam Ahl Sunnat radiallahu anhu wa rahmatullah alayhi. In there, in Kanzul Iman and in others, the translation and Nurul Irfan, the tafsir and commentaries. You see, when you recite the Quran, you shouldn't just read the Quran. You will get rewarded for reading the Quran, no doubt. There is Azim Ajar. For every letter you recite, Allah will give you 10 good deeds. There is Azim Ajar. There's immense reward for reading the Quran. But go one step further than just reading the Quran, read the translation as well. Understand what, is Allah, what Allah is telling us in the Quran. And then go one further step and read commentary of the Quran. Tafsir al-Quran. And by reading tafsir of the Quran, you get a better idea and understanding of what Allah is saying in the Quran. So Luqman, Allah Almighty talks about a number of things. He orders in Luqman to tell his son, he gives him wa'az and nasiha. In one of them, he says to his son, وَلَا تَمْشِي فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَا Don't walk on this earth arrogantly. Oh my son, I give you nasihat. I give you advice. I'm giving you wasiyah. I'm giving you advice, nasiha. My advice to you is, وَلَا تَمْشِي فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَا Don't walk on this earth arrogantly. Meaning, walk on this earth, be humble. Be humble in your walk. Why did he mention wala tamshi? And here Allah Almighty also mentioned wa ibadur rahman alladina yamshun. Tamshi yamshun. Both of them masha yamshi means to walk. Walking is something that we all of us regularly do. Very rarely do we sit in one place. We're always walking. And walking resembles. One of the most daily activities in our lives. There's two things we do regularly. Walking and talking. There's another thing we do as well. Sleeping and eating. <laughs> Insan loves to sleep. Insan loves to eat. The human being, he loves to sleep. And the human being loves to eat. But unfortunately, we don't walk as much as we eat. We'll walk when we need to walk. And that's why if we look at the state of a lot of our people, we have excess weight, bellies. Yani we are not fit. We don't do regular activities. Daily walking, not only is it good for a person to lose weight slowly, not only is it good for a person physically, that he goes on daily walks. Now the summer is coming, people will start going on daily walks in the parks. MashaAllah, Naveed Bhatt is here as well. MashaAllah, he's an exemplary example. He says, look at me, MashaAllah, look at me. And he, we, we should do daily walks. By walking daily, what will happen? Mentally, it clears our mind. You have time to think and clear your mind. Your breathing gets better. Your physical, you start to lose pounds and decrease in body fat. 
and your weight reduces as well. It strengthens your legs and your knees. And I'm not going to sit here and say to everyone, join a football team or join Route 1 or join Fairbank. No. <laughs> you're at a certain age when you're young, you can play and you can, you're more physically active. But here, look, Masha Yamshi, Allah mentions walking here as well. And in many other places in the Quran, in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَلَا تَمْشِي فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَا But there's ways of walking. You have people who walk arrogantly. And Sayyidina Luqman tells his son, don't walk arrogantly. Then you have other people which Allah describes, they don't walk arrogantly on the earth, they are very humble. وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنًا They are very, very soft, gentle. They are very humble in how they walk. And here Allah is describing who? His servants, the salihin. The righteous men of Allah, they, they are humble in their walk. And walking reflects everything. Speech. Standing, sitting, walking, talking, in every way, shape and form, Allah's righteous servants, they are humble. There is humility inside them. Humility is the sifat, it's an attribute that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. Allah loves those who are humble. He said in the, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Man tawada alillahi rafa'ahullah. He who is humble for the sake of Allah Almighty, Allah Almighty will elevate him. Allah will raise his maqam. Allah will increase his station. Allah will increase his hal and state. The one who is humble, humility. And not just humility in our speech, not just humility in our walking, our talking. True humility is in our minds and our hearts. Many people, they act humble. There's a lot of people who act humble. They show that they are humble. They will act humble. Acting humble, you can see. But true humility is what? And it is ijaz and inkisari, having this humility and being this, being, considering yourself low, lower than others, not better than others. This tawadu and humility, this ajizi that we should all have inside us. How, where is this from? How do we adopt this? You will find this sitting with the fuqara and the ghuraba. You will find humility when you sit with poor people. When you sit with people who have less than you, you will find humility with them. It will humble you. Humility is when nobody is watching. And you do for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is humility. The opposite of humility is what? Arrogance. Arrogance is the attribute, the attribute and the trait of who? Shaitan. Shaitan was arrogant. Shaitan had arrogance. What did Shaitan do? When he, Allah created Sayyidina Adam, he blew into Sayyidina Adam. He taught Sayyidina Adam the name of everything. Shaitan, before Sayyiduna Adam, Shaitan existed. Iblis, Azazil, these were names that the Shaitan had. Shaitan, Lucifer, whatever you were to term him. He existed before Sayyiduna Adam. And he, he was a jinn. He lived amongst the angels. He stayed with the angels. He worshipped Allah Almighty excessively. He worshipped Allah Almighty immensely. He never doubted worship in Allah Jalla wa ala. Even till now, shaitan believes in one Allah. He does not deny belief in Allah Jalla wa ala. What did shaitan do to make him shaitan? What made the devil the devil? Before he became the devil, he was good. How did he become the most rejected creation of Allah? How did he become the cursed one? How did he become the one whom we seek refuge from? Who has become the biggest enemy to man? Shaitan. How? When Allah Almighty created Sayyidina Adam and ordered all the angels, Fasajadu illa Iblis, all the angels to bow down to Sayyidina Adam, 
All the angels bow down, illa Iblis. Iblis was ordered to bow down as well. Iblis, shaitan, he didn't bow. When he was asked why, he said, خَلَقْتَنِي مِن نَارُ وَخَلَقْتُهُ مِن تِين This was his arrogance. He disobeyed the command of Allah. That was a sin. That, that he was the first one to ever disobey the command of Allah. Allah ordered him to bow down, do sajda to Adam. He says, no. I ana khairun minhu. And I am better than him. I am better than him. This I am better than him. This mentality of I am better than the other guy. This is what will destroy you, my brothers. Humility tells you, you are better than me. You are closer to Allah than me. Even if that person is an alcoholic, he's a gambler, he does wrong, the men of Allah Almighty will see good in him. They will make excuses for him. What will we do? We will condemn him. Ahlullah, awliyaullah, righteous people, salihin, they see good in people. They find excuses for their people. And whereas we will be the opposite. We will condemn people. We will throw them. We will pass the judgment and say, this guy is going to the fire of Jahannam. Look at his sins. But the men of Allah will never do this. The men of Allah will always give hope to the people. There are beacons of hope for the people. That famous story I mentioned last Friday of the man who killed 99 and then 100. He went to one man who thought he was better than him, the murderer, and said, you have no chance of forgiveness. He went to another man and the man said, you will be forgiven. Go to so and so place and Allah will forgive you there. Before he could arrive there, he died. And because his intentions were good, Allah forgave him. It's who you come across in life. The right people in your life will give you that advice and tell you that it will be okay. Turn to Allah. Allah will forgive you. He's most merciful. The wrong people will tell you, ah, the farake. <laughs> you got nothing. Finished. You have no hope, no chance. We need to find people who will bring hope into our lives, who will give us hope, who will increase this tawakkul yaqeen, this uh, trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we find that Allah jalla wa ala, his Habib sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallama, the righteous salihin awliya, we find that these are the people that allow us to get close to him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the aim. This is the objective. Shaitan, he said, I am better than him. You created me from fire and you created him from mud. His arrogance, takabbur, his arrogance, Allah Almighty said, you are rejected. Out from the gardens of paradise. Until Yawmul Qiyamah, he asked for permission. Respite that allow me to misguide. Allah says, I'll give you permission. But who I guide, you will not be able to misguide. Who I've guided, you can't misguide. And it is that on that point, from that day, from that moment, shaitan was the sworn enemy of Bani Insan, from, of the human race. Till then, till now, if you are arrogant, then you are following in the footsteps of shaitan. And if you are humble, then you follow in the footsteps of the angels. It is our duty to follow in the footsteps of the angels, to follow in the footsteps of Allah's righteous servants, those whom Allah has said in the Quran about, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنًا وَإِذَا خَاطَبُهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا All night they stand in ibadat and worship. When juhala, ignorant people, address them, they say, Salamu alaykum, peace be upon you, go. We, I don't want to argue with you. I don't want to debate with you. There are those people who walk humble on this earth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those people. Wa aqulu qawli hadha, astaghfirullah li wa lakum, wa akhru da'waya, an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Allah, Allah, Allah. لا إله إلا الله جود علي